Duke is in the blue tops, white bottoms. Charleston is in the black shirts and shorts. And off we go from Koskinen Stadium for the Blue Devils and the Cougars. Sit back and enjoy this one. A couple of substitutions in the Duke starting lineup tonight. Luke Thomas makes his first start of the season. Senior out of Charlotte will step in on the left side of the midfield for Duke. Additionally for the Blue Devils, first career start for Bull Jorgensen, freshman from Norway. He's appeared off the bench in six of the Blue Devils' seven games prior to the start of action tonight. So Jorgensen will step in, as well as Luke Thomas. Cameron Kerr, Keenan Hott, not in the starting lineup for Duke. So as a result, Ruben Masalas, who's over the ball right now, plays back a line on the back line for the Blue Devils. And Thomas, a left-footed player, over the ball now, 16 in blue, will be on the left side of the Blue Devils' midfields. Comer Nacito plays it back for team captain Antino Lopez. Lopez patiently defers for Masalas. Over to Thomas, space along the left flank. Looking for Wayne Frederick on an overlapping run. Thomas fires off a cross. Ball too strong for Forster at Jago. 21 in blue, scored his sixth goal of the season. Duke's lone tally in Sunday's loss. First goal since the month of August for Jago, the graduate transfer from the University of Dayton. Cougars quickly on the counter. Masalis will take it away for Duke. Switch of play to the right side of the field. And over there, Amir Daly. Daly, who's playing up a little bit on the midfield line tonight. So the Blue Devils are in their familiar 3-5-2. It's essentially a 3-2-3-2 for this 21st-ranked Duke team. But just a couple of players shuffling around with the new starters tonight. Etienne Julian, the Louisiana sophomore, dispossesses Thomas and sends it out of play for a Duke throw. One headline tonight for the Blue Devils, Michael Brady, the 16th year assistant coach, is the acting head coach tonight for Duke. John Kerr received a pair of yellow cards in the 38th minute of Sunday's game in Chapel Hill. Therefore, he will not coach tonight's game. He'll be back on the bench for the Blue Devils when they welcome in the reigning national champions from Syracuse on Friday night on ACC Network. So Michael Brady, the acting head coach for Duke this evening. Here's Daly. Daly to the top of the 18. Couple of defenders on him. Frederick lofts it off a Cougar and out of bounds. College of Charleston off to this 2-0-5 start under Keith Wiggins, fourth-year head coach in 2004, College of Charleston alum, longtime assistant under the legendary Ralph Lundy prior to Lundy's retirement. Cougars unbeaten in seven consecutive games for the first time since the very end of the 2017 season. Thomas lofted in a ball to the box, easily played by Ali Marshall. Marshall wearing that hot pink goalies outfit between the pipes for the Cougars tonight. And it's kind of interesting how College of Charleston has reached the 2-0-5 mark. It's not necessarily that they're playing a ton of scoreless games. They only have one of those draws that's finished in a scoreline of nothing, nothing. That was a conference game against Northeastern, September the 9th in Boston. But they have three 1-1 one -one draws and a 2-2 two -two draw to open up their year against Stetson. Of course, this is the second year with the adjusted overtime procedure in the regular season for college soccer. If we are level after 90 minutes, there's no longer an overtime period played. But when that rule change was made prior to last year, there was a lot of data that was utilized in saying that the majority of games that went to OT ended up as ties anyway, enough to justify eliminating the overtime period to save bodies during what is already a very tight and condensed regular season, just 10 weeks in length on the men's side, 11 on the women's. But yet you end up with more 
quirky records like the 2-0-5 with which the Cougars arrive here to the Bull City. Long ball for Amir Daly. Daly centrally played back for Nick Periano, the veteran. Periano back to Daly. Forward one touch of Jago toward the box. And cleared away again by Etienne Julian. Duke will win the second ball. Out wide. Here comes a cross and it sails well out of play. And out for a Cougar goal kick. Duke is unbeaten in their last 14 regular season non-conference games. One draw this year against Wofford. Additionally, Duke has wins over Jacksonville, Furman, and Princeton outside of ACC play. But this is the first non-conference clash for Duke since ACC play began. And as a result, it's the first home game since September the 8th. Even before Saturday's postponement, it was an eight-day layoff between games for the Blue Devils that allowed some extra training time last week. Talked to John Kerr about the focus for his group during that extra sessions of training. He said, trying to correct things that we didn't do well against Clemson. Worked on positioning in possession of the ball, trying to get the angles right offensively. Julian Eyestone is the keeper for Duke. True freshman from Dallas, Texas, reclassified up, originally part of the high school class of 2024. Duke coaching staff worked with him to finish high school early and enroll here in Durham for the 2023 season. Eyestone's played every minute and goal for Duke in his freshman campaign. ACC's defensive player of the week, September the 12th after he shut out Virginia in his first career ACC start. Not too shabby there. Ruben Masalas. Headed on, it's Ulfer Bjornsson, the freshman. No one there for the Blue Devils. So Bjornsson, hailing from Iceland, he started every game on the forward line his classmate Jorgensen making his first start tonight. Part of a Duke team that returned a lot of talent off of last year's national quarter finalist group, but still young players making their impact. Thomas, through ball, heavy for Periano, gathered in by Marshall. A couple of interesting notes on the Cougar lineup tonight. Player challenging for the ball right there, 19 in black is Matt Leonard. Only the second start of the year for the freshman from Virginia. Chris Elliott, who has a pair of goals this year, the reigning CAA Rookie of the Year, off the bench tonight for the third time in eight contests. Peter Thomas, bottom of your screen, 33 in black, does return for Charleston after not playing against Furman last Tuesday. He also has a pair of goals to go with two assists this season. Chris Cushing, the Winthrop transfer. Leonard, one touch wide. Cut out well by Asito, the reigning ACC freshman of the year. Ten in black is Leonardo D'Ambrosio, junior from Italy. Second team all-conference a year ago. Started all but two games for the Cougars over the last couple of years. Ambrosio also with two goals this season. So the trio of Elliott, D'Ambrosio, and Thomas, each owning two goals to their name. It's been a balanced attack for the Cougars in their 2-0-5 start. Long ball off the free kick. Headed on for Eyestone. 
and a Charleston foul anyway. Challenge in the box. Lopez sends it out wide. Spinning free. Thomas over it. He's been busy. Masalis overlapping run up from the outside back spot. Thomas plays it on opportunity, and Ajago finishes it. Charleston pleading for an offside call. Carl Coomer is our center referee tonight. I did not see a flag go up. And now, upon further conversation, you see at top center of your screen that, in fact, offsides occurred. It looked from the naked eye like it was offside, but until the call was made, you never quite know for sure. Wayne Frederick, Maryland sophomore. Thomas for Lopez to switch the point of attack. Aceto and Daly connect. Daly, look at the acceleration. Here comes Amir Daly. Hesitates. Good wait on the pass to Frederick. Masalis takes a long distance rip off the crossbar, headed on over the bar. Ruben Masalis trying to score from distance and blasts it off the woodwork here in the 11th minute. First couple of shots going to Duke. Masalis off the crossbar. Bjornsson with the header over. Charleston has had a couple of opportunities to possess in the final third. Majority of the possession so far, though, belonging to the hosts tonight. All sorts of space for Daly, who plays it down. Frederick making the turn. Thomas, one touch cross, heavy for a Jago, collected by Daly. Blue Devil foul will give possession back to the visiting Cougars. Charleston's last win against an ACC program came in 2010 against Wake Forest. Full of matchups through the years. Last year, took on NC State at home at Patriots Point in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Charleston coming on the road tonight, looking for that elusive victory over the nation's most competitive and deepest men's college soccer conference. Peter Thomas has it taken back by Masalis. Periano, John Kerr says, as he goes, we go. Jorgensen, first career start. Chance for a Jago in the box. Lots of black shirts back there. You wondered about playing two games, and again, it's about 52 or so hours, especially given how physical Sunday's game was. 15 combined cards between Duke and North Carolina. You wondered how that would impact Duke coming into tonight. Blue Devils 
playing with energy, playing with pace so far. Almost had the first goal of the game and got a couple of looks in the 11th minute. Here's Daly. Over the end line it goes. Duke's last three game losing streak came in 2020. That's the abbreviated fall season in which the Blue Devils played a conference only schedule against regional opponents in the midst of the COVID pandemic. Victory tonight or a draw would ensure that that remains the most recent three game slide for Duke. Frederick, his cross, Daly, heavy touch. D'Ambrosio, all conference. Out of play off of Charleston and a Duke throw deep in their attacking ends. Luke Thomas made four starts last year, including against Denver in the NCAA tournament. His first of the season here tonight. Salas looks for his options. Daly. Dangerous Ajago connects with Frederick. Widens for Thomas. Thomas again across. Cougar fans plead for a foul. Jorgensen wins possession back for Duke. Centrally again, it comes from Asalas playing back on the back line tonight. Ball rolls all the way through a whole bunch of bodies and out of play. Ali Marshall has played every minute in goal for College of Charleston this season. Sends it away to the midline. Cougars will have a free kick to restart. Very bottom left of your screen, you see Keith Wiggins, the head coach. Fourth-year head coach after 11 years as an assistant. He was a three-year starter at goalkeeper for the Cougars, helping the team to the 2004 NCAA tournament. Offside Cougars, possession goes to the Blue Devils. Offside call against Charleston. Thomas involved in the play again. Luke Thomas taken away. Bull Jorgensen, full name Nikolai Ronaldo Bull Jorgensen, goes by Bull. A Jago shot blocked. Frederick wins the second ball. Too much on it for Thomas, but it is out off Charleston. And a Duke throw. Oh, 
Asito. Given away and a chance for the Cougars to build something here. Charleston still without a shot tonight. Shots five, nothing in favor of Duke. None of the five have been on frame though. For a Duke team that came in tops in the ACC, sixth nationally in shots per game, just over 17. Shots on goal a game, second in the conference, 15th in the nation, just under seven. This is Peter Thomas over the ball for the Cougars, weaving toward the six. Leonard Nystone become entangled. The Duke keeper picks it up. Masalas will lead the break on the counter. Marshall easily plays it, but quickly sends it away. Daly will build once more. Here's Bjornsson back to Daly. Masalis options to switch. Plays it forward along the spine. Periano. Periano dances centrally. Daly weaving into the box. Daly for Periano takes a look out top. Bounces back. Played forward. And Charleston will have a goal kick. Bjornsson challenging Marshall as Duke continues to threaten. Periano's shot bouncing off the crossbar didn't make as hard of an impact as the Masala shot in the 11th minute. But yet again, Duke challenging. D'Ambrosio looking for Thomas. Lopez takes it away. Bjornsson, plenty of space up the right flank. Didn't have enough for Daly. It's taken back through the midfield by the Cougars. Blue Devil foul will give it back to Charleston. Way through our opening half tonight, the eighth all-time meeting between Duke and College of Charleston, first since 2005. Jorgensen again leading Duke's attack forward. Thomas left corner header again high. That was Jorgensen that took a look with his noggin. Marshall will have it for a goal kick. Duke leads the all-time series 5-2. Charleston's last win coming in 1996 duke taking the last three meetings between the two sides blue devils trying to stop a two-game losing streak both coming on the road in acc play two nothing to clemson two one to rival north carolina as for charleston unbeaten through their first seven but two oh and five Three consecutive draws for the Cougars. Seven nothing shot advantage for Duke so far in this one. 
None of the seven shots on goal, though. Fouls even at four. Neither team has had a corner thus far. Thomas, 1v1, and Etienne Julian takes it away. Julian, the New Orleans sophomore, 22 in black. Starter in every game so far for Charleston in second season. In the Holy City. And out for a Duke throw. Build up for the Cougars, tapers out on the errant pass. Charleston will make the game's first substitution at the next opportunity. Tell you about the new Cougar when that moment arrives. Thomas, again out wide, again fires it across. Ajago can't play it cleanly. This, though, out off Charleston, and it'll be our first corner of the night. Duke just under six corners a game. It's actually a strength of Charleston so far. They're top 25 in the nation in corners drawn per game. Under six and a half. Nick Periano will line up to take the corner for Duke. Periano curves it top of the six. Free for the taking. She'll stay with Duke, but maybe a little more weight on the service than Duke would have liked. Free kick just inside the sideline across the way. Long ball. Out off Charleston. Nope, check that. And off the Blue Devils just beside the far post. And a Charleston goal kick. It's not one but two subs for the Cougars. Leonard comes off. Lucas Cedarmark, senior from Stockholm, comes on. Also, Chris Matlaszewski, the Clemson transfer, will hit the bench. And Iker Carew will come in. Sophomore from Norway, who also has represented Ecuador on the international level. His father, set, uh, 27 caps for the Ecuadorian senior national team. Carew number seven in black. Ezra White over the ball. Six in black, plays it out wide. And just as soon as the Cougars make some subs, Duke will bring four new bodies in. Both of the coaches' sons, Cameron and Drew Kerr. Cameron number six in blue. Drew number 22 will come in. Duke, also entering Keenan Hot, who had started the first seven games of the year. And Miguel Ramirez makes his seventh appearance off the bench this season. Jorgensen will sit. Daly will sit. And Wayne Frederick is well to the bench. So a whole host of changes through the midfield for the Blue Devils. Also for Charleston, Samuel Bass enters. Grad transfer from Washington and Lee, who's played in every game off the bench for the Cougars this year. Julienne serves it in, headed out. And also coming in for Charleston, mentioned the name earlier in the broadcast that he wasn't starting tonight. Last year's CAA Rookie of the Year, Chris Elliott. Elliott, nine in black, top right of your screen. This is Elliott. Challenging Antino Lopez, back to Duke it goes. A 
Jago. Ball pops straight up in the air. Periano as Jago stays down and now play brought to a stop by Carl Coomer. Cameron Kerr, six in blue, graduate student. Fifth season in the Duke program. First time off the bench this year. A couple of points on two assists this season. Masalas and Lopez easily take the ball back. Now Cameron's younger brother, Drew, 22 in blue, gets involved. Ice Stone being challenged by Elliott. Lopez, long ball out to the flank and Cameron Kerr for the moment gets the Blue Devils out of trouble. Ramirez and Kerr connect. Kerr back for Ramirez. Here's Duke in the final attacking third once more. Been there a lot. Eight shots, none on goal tonight. Drew Kerr, who stepped on for Luke Thomas, was so involved from the left side. Long ball sails well high and away from the far post. Speaking of Duke subs, here come two more. Cameron Fisher, the grad transfer from North Carolina, who made, made his Duke debut on Sunday against his former team. He will come on. Additionally, Fami Ibrahim on for the sixth time this year. Transfer from Cal. So Ajago will hit the bench, as will Bjornsson. And it's a switch of the Duke forwards with Ibrahim and Fisher in there for the final just under 14 minutes of this opening half. It's an opening half that has been controlled possession-wise and tempo-wise by Duke. Nothing to show for it on the scoreboard, though, against a Charleston team that has drawn three straight, five of their first seven this year, in route to a 2-0-5 start. Their longest run without a defeat since nine games at 6-0-3 to end the 2017 season. Julian's through ball, intercepted by Masalis. subs that Charleston made was to bring Ethan Garvey into the game. A 6-7 outside back. Transfer from Evansville. Physical play and the foul called on Charleston. Away through the midfield. Chance for the Cougars. Long distance look. Just wide. That was Carew that shot it. Bringing it forward, trying to test Julian Eyestone. That is the first shot of the game for Charleston. Much like the eight that Duke has taken so far, though, not on frame. Charleston pressing up a little bit harder with these substitutes in the game. They've weathered the storm so far in the defensive end. And that shot from Carew, a reminder that even though Duke has held so much possession, created so many chances off of crosses, because they don't have anything to show for it, one quick counter off a sloppy giveaway, and next thing you know, Charleston could take control of this game.
hot. Out wide. Ramirez wheels it back for Asito. Lopez deferring for Masalas. This is Kerr. Interplay with Masalas. Now hot the distributor. Periano with numbers pushing forward. Drew Kerr. Ops against a strong cross. Periano. Periano with the footwork. Periano serves it in. Heavy for Fisher. Second ball headed out by Charleston. Chance for the Cougars on the counter. And play will stop in a yellow card issued to Dukes Miguel Ramirez. Carl Coomer will issue the booking to the Lawrenceville, Both Georgia senior. Final 10 minutes of what to this point has been a scoreless first half. ACC against the CAA. Duke's first home game since September 8th. Julienne. Chris Cushing, the Winthrop transfer. Ibrahim. Ibrahim staying on side, trying to create space. Ibrahim. And another one well high and outright. Bounced out of the stadium. There is nobody back there in that vacant parking lot that you see. The ball is somewhere down there. I think it bounced down the hill past those golf carts. Run right on cue, there is a stadium worker exiting through a gate down to our left to go try and find that one. Good luck. It's like an Easter egg hunt in September. Here's Carew took the one shot for Charleston. Trying to create a spark off the bench. Julian with space on the right flank. Switched back for Carew. Cut off well by Kerr. Lateral dribble over the top, looking for Cedar Mark, and the flag came up anyway. Second offside call against Charleston. Blue Devils have been called off once so far in this game. It was delayed offside call after Forster Ajago found the back of the net, but the goal was waved off. Drew Kerr, low flat ball taken back by Julian. Their keepers had to make a save so far. Ten combined shots in the game. Nine taken by Duke. None of those ten shots on goal. Periano chasing after it. And well off his line to smother the loose ball. Marshall. Garvey sees it taken back.
Duke has been a second half team this season. 13 of their 16 goals as a team have been scored after halftime. Kerr headed out. Should be a Duke corner here. And it is. So Periano will jog to the corner spot. And a chance off the set piece here. About six minutes to go in the half. Periano. Flat ball for Masalas. Masalas sends in a cross and out for another corner. And you see the gentleman with the ball jogging there along the banner. That's the ball that bounced away a couple minutes ago. And now I think he's got to go get that other one. <laughs> Periano serves it in. And out the other side for another corner. Three consecutive corners for Duke here. Duke corner kick taken by number 12, Ruben Masalis. Ruben Masalis will stand over it. Lefty strike in swinging ball. Pinballs free and ticked out again. Ibrahim got a good look at it. Now from the corner on this side, back goes the right-footed Periano. This has used up about 90 seconds of time late in this first half. Periano blasts it on. Ramirez settles it down, still free. Lopez has it blocked by Julian and another one. Goodness gracious. Charleston defensively standing on their head, but they can't clear it out of danger. Duke corner kick taken by number 12, Ruben Masalas. Five consecutive corners. Can Duke do anything with it? Masalas. And it's a handball in the box. A handball by the Cougars. Duke will have a PK. Well, eventually, you had to figure that the barrage of corners would lead to some sort of opportunity for Duke. And in the end, it's the third PK attempt of the year. Duke is two for two. First time that Ali Marshall has faced a PK this season. Cougars have not allowed one to an opponent so far. Periano stands at the spot. Chance to turn five straight corners into the game's opening goal. The senior from Philadelphia ready. Buries it. Second of the year for Nick Periano. Duke's third PK goal of the year. And eventually five consecutive corners Yielding the foul in the box, creating the PK opportunity, and Duke scores late in this first half to take the 1 0 lead. The shot number now, by the way, 14-1 Duke. Shots on goal, 3-0 Blue Devils. And you had to figure with the way that Duke is controlled possession, controlled tempo throughout the night, finding just their fourth first half goal this season major sign of accomplishment so far. So 
it felt like a Blue Devil goal was coming for a while. Now if you're Charleston, you want to try and get yourself into the locker room, ideally level at one, but at a bare minimum, keeping this a one nothing game, chance to regroup. Get set to find a way to create more possession in the second 45, knowing you need at least one here tonight to continue an unbeaten start to the season. Long free kick from Carew. Chance for Ibrahim on the counter. Ibrahim, 1v1. Now a second defender comes over. Ibrahim pumps the brake, serves it in. He'll take it back himself. Takes a look and it's blocked. Dangerous challenge across the way and I think this will result in a second booking of the night for Duke. Yellow card will be issued to Cameron Kerr. Yellow card issued against Duke on number six, Cam Kerr. So now a yellow card on Miguel Ramirez and a yellow card charged to Cameron Kerr tonight. Just over two minutes left in the first half. Cougar fans displeased the possession is going to go Duke's way here. Ramirez sent out wide to Sito. Back for Periano, the goal scorer off the PK. Kerr, wide to the far post. Frustrated with himself, slaps the grounds. Trying to score his second of the season. Blue Devils, as we told you, came in. Tops in the ACC in shots per game at just over 17. One minute, one minute remaining in They've the already half. fired off now 16 of them, nearly all the way to the season average in the first half alone. Final minute of the half. Julien, lofting ball for Elliott, the reigning conference rookie of the year. He will take possession out in the corner. Charleston playing it all the way back to the keeper, Marshall, but they've got less than 30 seconds to try and build something here. Garvey. Lengthy crossing pass. Carew sees Kerr take it away. He'll simply bang it away as the clock continues to tick. Throw for the Cougars with six and five. Elliott trying to turn. Asito doesn't give him a look, and the half comes to a close. Well, the Blue Devils, with a sequence of five consecutive corners, right around five minutes to go in the half, eventually yielding a foul in the box, and Nick Periano stepping to the PK spot and converting on his penalty kick opportunity. That's what has Duke We're visiting College Charleston. Nick Periano with a 42nd minute penalty kick goal, putting Duke on top. A first half in which Duke led shots 16 to one. Just three of the 16 on goal, though. Duke with six corners to Charleston's none in that first half. The penalty kick goal came after a sequence of five consecutive corners right around the five minutes to go mark in the first half of play. So Duke on top, one nothing. They're in the blue, attacking the right side of your screen in the second half. College Charleston is in the all-black shirts and shorts. Matt Krause with you. Thanks so much for making us a part of your Tuesday evening 
for this eighth all-time meeting between the Cougars and the Blue Devils. Charleston undefeated this season, 2-0-5. Three consecutive draws for a team that has not played since last Tuesday. They had a bye in Coastal Athletic Association play last weekend. It was their last action, a non-conference draw with Furman on the road. Iker Carew starting the second half after coming off the bench in the first and misses outright. Carew has now taken both of the shots for Charleston from a similar length. That one less of a challenge for Duke's Julian I. Stone. Blue Devils had multiple shots go off the crossbar in the first half and controlled much of the possession throughout the opening 45. But still went into the locker room up 1-0 after the third penalty kick goal of the year for Duke. And as we told you, Duke has now scored 17 goals this season. 13 of those goals have come after halftime. Forster Ajago will leave it off for Amir Daly to handle the duties on the throw-in. Well, for Bjornsson, Ajago weaving. And the 17th shot of the game, that equals Duke's season average. Tops in the ACC and sixth in the nation into play tonight. Blue Devils, even in the 2-1 defeat Sunday, just about 52 hours ago or so, they fell to North Carolina on the road 2-1. Duke outshot the Tar Heels 15-7. Shots on goal, though, 5-3, so a similar pattern bearing itself out here on this Tuesday evening. Very physical affair with 15 combined cards, 36 combined fouls on Sunday. But the Blue Devils coming out strong tonight, turning the page quickly and trying to get back on the winning track into the process, hand Charleston their first defeat of the season. Cougar team that was 5-7-5 five, five a year ago. Off to the undefeated start at 2-0-5 oh this year. If you just joined us, Ruben Masalas over the ball now. Playing it outside back today. As Luke Thomas made the start, left side of the midfield. Amir Daly up a line, playing in the midfield as well for Duke. No Cameron Kerr, no Keenan Hot in the starting lineup tonight. Both of them featured off the bench in the first half of play. Periano, long service, too strong for Bjornsson, gathered in by Marshall. Veteran Connor Walmsley, fifth year in a Cougar uniform, 21 in black. Walmsley for the Cougar throw. Bull Jorgensen, first start as a Blue Devil, eight in blue tonight. You can see on your screen what amounts to basically a heavy mist has started to fall here in Durham. Certainly wouldn't call it rain, but it is making what is already kind of a dewy field even more of a wet track here in the second half. Ball forward into the box. Mariano looking for Thomas. Wayne Frederick collects it just out to the right side. And 
it is determined that Frederick's shot was touched. And therefore, Duke will head to the corner. Duke corner kick taken by number 12, Ruben Masalis. Ruben Masalis will line up for Duke's seventh corner of the night. And we wiped the camera so you could see it. Salas serves it in. Top of the six. Bounced around. Second ball. And a Duke foul will send it back to Charleston. Duke trying to walk away with a win tonight here in this second game of a stretch of what will amount to three games in six days. Duke didn't play between September the 15th and 24th. Here's Charleston with the three on two. Pushing forward. Chris Elliott over the ball. Stone well off his line, and it's a PK for the Cougars. Julian Eyestone will be booked. The third yellow of the night charge to Duke. And now College of Charleston, one for one on penalty kicks this Joel season. Duke on one, the Cougars have the opportunity to equalize. It's the first time this season that a Duke opponent has drawn a PK. First time that Eyestone will see a PK as a Duke Blue Devil, Leonardo D'Ambrosio, two goals this season. The Italian junior, D'Ambrosio, ties us. A PK goal for Duke in the first half, a PK for Charleston in the second. We're level. Cougars goal number 10, Leonardo D'Ambrosio. Third goal of the season for D'Ambrosio. That gives him sole possession of the team lead for the Cougars. Seventh and eighth points of the year. He's got a couple of assists as well. D'Ambrosio missed his freshman campaign in 2021 with a broken foot. Came back last year, second team all-conference. And now has tied this game at one apiece. Tonight completely changes the dynamic of this one. Dispossessed. Iker Carew. Carew. Good ball centrally for the goal scorer, D'Ambrosio. Now the Cougars a chance to build something here in the run of play. Etienne. Taken back by Masalis. Ethan Garvey beginning the second half at center back. Played off the bench as an outside back in the first half. Cougar team yet to suffer a defeat this season. Has pulled themselves back even with the benefit of the penalty spot here in the second half. Chance for Duke to regain the lead. Periano, Periano bounces out. And again, touched by the Cougars. So Blue Devil corner forthcoming. Eighth corner of the game for Duke. Duke corner kick taken by number 12, Ruben Masalis. Left-footed Ruben Masalis will stand in the corner. He'll send it in. First ball won by the Cougars. It's 
sequence defended well. Lopez and Carew, and Carew pulls down Lopez. Mist is tapered off a little bit here. So Masalas will stand over the ball, serve it in, head it out. Periano should be first to it and is. Long one for a Jago, pops up in the air, Marshall off his line. Salas plays it out for Lopez. Lopez will drop it all the way back. Nearly had it taken away by Elliott. That's out for a Cougar throw. A lot of energy from the Charleston bench. Elliott. Elliott trying to get a cross in. Has a couple of defenders on him. Unable to do so. Has to drop it back instead. Frederick for Amir Daly. Boy, this game has gotten wide open here in the second half ever since the Cougars equalized. Carew quickly the other direction. Carew for D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio sends it into space. Too much on it for Elliott to make a run. Something makes me think this one tonight is not going to end up 1-1. Asito. Garvey will chase it into the corner, bang it away. It's a Duke throw deep in the corner. Periano. Frederick. Frederick and D'Ambrosio. A couple of teammates run into each other. Frederick spins in. Can Periano keep it in play? He'll sprint to the corner. Does so. Good hustle play by the senior. Working in end line. Salas takes a long look. Well out it goes. Nick Periano's PK in the 42nd minute, giving Duke a 1-0 halftime lead. Ten minutes later, in the 52nd, Leonardo D'Ambrosio, a PK for Charleston. Duke is unbeaten in 14 straight regular season non-conference games. Draw earlier this year against Wofford. Drew Yale last year here at Koskinen. Daly. Daly moving quickly. Forster Ajago. Ajago curves it high. That puts Duke at the 20 shot mark. Now shooting the Cougars 20 to 3. But yet. Only three of the 20 have been on frame.
Cameron Aceto settles over it. Duke, at least for the moment, seems to have quelled Charleston's skill on the counter. Trying to slow things down, play more possession oriented. Aceto, Periano centrally, good ball. Ticked away in a Blue Devil corner as Bjornsson fired it in. Ninth corner of the game for Duke. Duke corner kick taken by number 12, Ruben Masalis. And Ruben Masalis will stand over it. An hour complete, 30 minutes to go. Corner sent in. Back to the Cougars it'll go. Charleston will make a sub. Matt Leonard will check in. He'll replace Lucas Cedarmark. Leonard made the start earlier. Also, Ezra White are in the captain's armband tonight for the Cougars. Number six, Ezra White. White will spell Samuel Bass. Bjornsson couldn't connect with Periano. Bends in across, headed out. Frederick. Daly racing after it. Amir Daly, he's shown off his speed a couple of times. Can't keep it in play. Things getting a little chippy before the Charleston throw. Daly, Periano. Daly's cross. Luke Thomas fighting for it against Leonard. Keeps possession for Duke. Out wide, Thomas, first start of the season for him. Bjornsson chips it up across the goal mouth. Spins down to Daly. Another cross. Bjornsson heads it down. Periano takes a look. Bouncing ball wide of the woodwork. Another flurry of opportunities for the Blue Devils, but we stay level at one. Cushing plays it out. Iker Carew. Carew's taking a couple of long shots for Charleston. Loses the ball, though. Jorgensen on the counter, only to see Cushing win it back. Oh, the Cougars will settle and try and work for something. Not enough on the pass, though. Taken back. Periano, beautiful through ball. Ajago stays on side. Ajago dancing left. Shot blocked. Frederick. And out for a Duke throw. Aceto. Weaving through the midfield. Here's Jorgensen. And again, Daly on the flank. Daly's cross.
D'Ambrosio, the goal scorer, he'll take it forward on the counter, working it centrally on his own dribble. Elliott, Elliott, 1v1 against Lopez. Defenders racing back, though, for Duke, and the numbers advantage dissipating quickly. Tom Wilson, the veteran back. Wilson taking it all the way forward himself. Anchor Carew. Jago trying to get fancy. Michael Brady, the acting head coach for Duke tonight, 16th year assistant. Interlocked his hands, put him on his head. Frustration. Twenty-four-three, the shot number favoring Duke. Thomas, ball spins into space. Bjornsson, Bjornsson hesitates. Bjornsson fires. Marshall knocks it away. Duke corner, 10th of the game. Duke corner kick taken by number 10, Nick Periano. Periano, low corner, flat corner. Masalis over it. Cameron Kerr off the bench for the first time this Duke season. Stepping onto the pitch, number six, Cam Kerr. Kerr will replace Luke Duke Thomas. Taken by number 10, Nick Periano. This time, Periano's ball is an in-swinger. It'll bounce out to Bjornsson. Bjornsson, cross blocked. What do you know? Corner number 12. Remember, it was a sequence of five consecutive corners with about five minutes to go in the first half that led to the foul in the box and the Duke PK. Fami Ibrahim back in. Ibrahim will replace a Jago. Corner comes in. Now it will go along the sideline. This will be a Duke throw. If you see a Jago walking outside the field of play, he's taking the long route back to the bench. He was just subbed out for Ibrahim. Of course, he can re enter. If you begin the second half, you're permitted one re entry. So Ajango will catch his breath before he'll return to play here today. Chance here for the Cougars. Lopez negates it. Charleston wanted a foul call. Wilson will chase it down. Marshall, the keeper. Masalis. Bjornsson, one touch. Bjornsson. Here's Ibrahim, fresh off the bench. Long look from Masalis, blocked. 13th corner of the game for Duke. 
Blue Devils came in averaging less than six a game, and they have more than doubled that tonight. Periano serves it in. Masalas over the bar. Peter Thomas will check in here for Charleston. Thomas started this game early on. Chris Elliott will go to the bench. College of Charleston substitution. Charleston has a lengthy trip to New Jersey this weekend to see Monmouth on Saturday in their next conference action. And in a league like the CAA, it becomes even more imperative for coaches to handle player management with these midweek games that are important for RPI purposes and important for program changing wins. As our referee Carl Coomer trying to warn Ali Marshall here about time wasting but very important opportunities for signature season changing victories and results but also the automatic berth to the tournament comes through the conference championship so especially in leagues like the CAA not everybody makes the conference tournament there's just so much more pressure on those weekend matches Ball off the hand of Daly, and it'll be a free kick for the Cougars. D'Ambrosio and Carew. Standing over that ball. Carew on the left, D'Ambrosio on the right. D'Ambrosio looking forward into the box. Thomas fresh off the bench, working at end line. Thomas tries to get the corner, turned, and the Cougars take the lead. Peter Thomas weaving down the end line, snuck it past Eyestone. And Charleston with a pair in the second half in front. A first half dominated by Duke with a 1-0 scoreline at the break. And now the Cougars with a PK and a goal off that sneaky set piece. They find themselves in front 2-1 and just over 18 minutes away from their first win over an ACC program since 2010. Still a long way to go for a Duke team that has shown the ability to control possession throughout this game. By the way, Leonardo D'Ambrosio's stint as Charleston's team leader in goals and points short-lived. Peter Thomas is now equal to him. Three goals, eight points for both of them now this year. Carew. Thomas back centrally. All the way out wide. Here come the Cougars looking for another one. Leonard for Thomas. Thomas dances down, and it's out off Ice Stone for a corner. It was nearly a brace for Peter Thomas. Ambrosio will take his time heading to the corner. Cougars corner kick taken by number 10, Leonardo D'Ambrosio. Back out to D'Ambrosio. Pursued by Periano. 
Periano takes it away from him. Ibrahim with the speed. Ibrahim looking to equalize. Ibrahim a left-footed shot. Right to Ali Marshall. Marshall has performed well when called upon today. 27-5 shot advantage for Duke, but shots on goal just 5-3. Kerr. He'll lob it in. Blue Devils pushing the numbers forward. Periano for Frederick. Daly playing up the midfield line tonight. Kerr. Kerr's cross. Back for Periano with space. Forward inside the box, Masalis. Masalis looking to create. Bodies entangled and a Duke foul will give it back to the Cougars. Forster Ajango, the leading goal scorer for Duke, receiving instructions from Michael Brady down below. He's about to re-enter this game. Trying to create some magic for the Blue Devils. And a bare minimum, Charleston's bid to stay unbeaten through eight games. Looking really, really good right now. Blue Devils would need two in 15 minutes. Certainly possible. But a Cougars team that came in 2-0-5. Drawn three in a row. Opportunity to win one on the road here tonight. Marshall couldn't get it away cleanly. Does bounce away over the sideline. That creates a Duke throw and permits a Jago to re-enter. Six goals this season for the graduate transfer from Dayton. He'll enter the ball game as... Duke Cameron the Kerr goes to the, to the bench. Sure Leonardo D'Ambrosio, who scored the goal on the PK for Charleston, will jog off. Zeno Ballish, senior from North Charleston, makes his sixth appearance of the season off the Cougar bench. Leonard's much too heavy for Thomas. Back it goes Eyestone. He'll quickly distribute out for Asizo as we close toward 13 minutes to go here in our match tonight. Ajago and Wilson. Ajago does well to find Daly. Periano, switch of play, Ibrahim. Ibrahim will step inside the box. Work on Etienne Julian. Charleston's bench yelling, no fouls, no fouls. Ball served in. Periano, look at the speed, the hustle. Keeps possession for Duke. He'll lob one in. Headed up in the air and over the bar. Cougar sub. Damon Williams. Fourth appearance for the Columbia oh, South Carolina junior. Anchor Carew will go to the bench. Onto the pitch. Duke has not lost three in a row since 2020. They have not lost a regular season non-conference game since September 6th, 2021 against Seattle here in Durham. Near Daly. This is a Jago's ball. A Jago dancing left. Well, out to the left side. Go, 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 go. 
Charleston's last win in this series, 1996 at home. Their only win ever in Durham, October 29th, 1995. They have not beaten any ACC team since 2010 against Wake Forest. Peter Thomas. Peter Thomas has numbers. Ice Stone kicks it away. Second chance recovered. And wide of the cage. It is a Cougar corner. Peter Thomas, who scored what is now the go-ahead goal, would be a game winner if this scoreline stands. Nearly had another one there. And clock will stop here. 10.59 to go. Charleston corner kick taken by 26, Chris Cushing. Chris Cushing will take the corner kick. A Winthrop transfer caught the eye of Coach Keith Wiggins while playing for Winthrop in a win over the Cougars last year. Cushing, top of the six, headed back. Second ball taken by Masalis. Here comes Duke on the counter. They've got speed and numbers, but Charleston hustling back. Periano. That's out for a Duke throw. Ezra White fired up. And there'll be some subs here. Duke will bring Drew Kerr back into the game. Charleston will enter George Maxwell. College of Charleston substitution. Stepping on the pitch, number five, George Maxwell. Matt Leonard will exit for the Cougars. Drew Kerr replacing Ibrahim for Duke. Amir Daly. Thought the referee was about to stop the clock. And now it'll go back to the Cougars. And that's what the Duke bench is saying, is that he was making the motion to stop the clock as if he was going to issue a card. And instead, play continued. Now, with 9.25 to go, the clock does stop to prevent the Cougars from chewing up time here. Possession back to the Blue Devils anyway. Periano, Ajago, out wide. Kerr, all the way across the goal mouth, no one there to make a run. Marshall will bang this one away for the Cougars. Out it'll go for a Charleston throw. Eight and a half left. Can Duke find their way to an equalizer? Not multiple goals in the final 817. Salvage a draw or a dramatic comeback win here. Kerr. Dish down into the corner. Forward for a Jago. There it is. Forster a Jago. Seventh of the season. The graduate transfer from Dayton 
punches one home, and the Blue Devils even up the score with eight to go. Back-to-back -back games with a goal for a Jago. Masalas and Periano pick up the assists. Second assist for Masalas, fifth for Periano this year. So now, just moments ago, we're talking about can Duke find their way to one goal, maybe even two? Well, there's one. Seven and a half to see if this game will end with Charleston's fourth consecutive draw and sixth of the season in eight games. Or if one of these teams scores a late goal to provide a winner. Bjornsson. That'll be out for a Duke corner. 14th corner of the game for Duke. Duke corner kick taken by number 10, Nick Periano. Periano sends it in. Out it goes Kerr. Into the corner, Periano. Dances inside the box. Pops up across the goal mouth. It'll stay in play as Bjornsson gets over it. Bjornsson weaves it out, locates Daly. Daly. Back to Bjornsson it goes. Periano top of the box. Periano bends it. Marshall there. Stays to all. Long one, well out of play. Duke throw. Duke has dropped two straight games. They had not lost three in a row since 2020. Now, as long as they don't concede in the final 545 or so, at least that losing streak will come to a close. But look at the way that Duke is playing out here. They are not content with splitting the points tonight. You can tell that Duke wants to find their way to one more, capitalize on a Cougar group that felt that they were well on their way to an ACC win. They give up the equalizer. Duke trying to take advantage of that for a go-ahead third goal. Daly slips. Frederick there to the far post. Headed on! There it is! A brace for a Jago! Blowing kisses to his teammates. He has single-handedly pushed Duke to a 3-2 lead. We're just making the point that from a momentum standpoint, this game took a massive, massive turn when Ajago equalized. And now his eighth goal of the season gives Duke a 3-2 lead with 5.03 to go. Iker Carew back in for the Cougars. A Charleston group that now will try and find their third goal of the half. What an entertaining evening we've had here in Durham. Nick Periano, a PK in the 42nd minute. Leonardo D'Ambrosio, a 52nd minute PK. Charleston scored again in the 72nd. Peter Thomas with a goal off a set piece. Now 82nd and 85th minute goals from Ajago. By the way, Wayne Frederick and Amir Daly picking up the assists there. And a Duke team that's fired off 35 shots tonight. They 
They're up three to two here, four and a half minutes to go. I Stone. Ajago. Already has one hat trick this year. Periano. It is equal parts pushing, equal parts keep away and time chewing for the Blue Devils right now. Bounce into the waiting arms. Volley Marshall. He and the Cougars have got to go. Three and a half left. Down a goal. Long one to switch play to Williams. Damon Williams dips it back for Walmsley. Header one by Kerr. Out it'll go. It'll be a Cougar throw with exactly three left. D'Ambrosio scored on the PK will jog in. Stepping on number 10, Leonardo D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio replaced Chris Cushing. I Stone hesitated momentarily. He'll scoop it up. And now the clock will stop as a Blue Devil has gone down. Looks like some cramping. Medical staff will head on out with 2.31 to go. So now Duke... Number 21 in the land on their way to not only avoiding that three-game losing streak, but running their unbeaten streak in regular season non-conference games to 15 in a row. Bull Jorgensen, after cramping, will step Ramirez. off. Miguel Ramirez will come back on to finish this one off. Duke will improve to six and two against Charleston if this scoreline holds. Go to four zero oh, and one at Koskinen Stadium this year. Duke's next challenge, their third game in six days, only comes against the reigning national champions from Syracuse. Friday, 7 o'clock on ACC Network. Amir Daly wins the ball back. Ajago. Chance now for the Cougars. Under two left. Might be one of the last good looks they get. Walmsley controlling it. Ezra White back to Walmsley. Duke backing everybody down. Long ball to switch the play. Header won by Kerr. Frederick will race away. Wayne Frederick pulled down from behind. That'll be a card. A Cougar card on Chris Elliott. He'll be shown the yellow with 118 left. The Duke coaching staff. Yellow card issued against College of Charleston. Wanting the clock to run.
yellow card was issued. And they put one minute on the clock. One minute, one minute remaining in regulation. Final minute, Blue Devils with a pair of four-star Jago goals in the 82nd and 85th minutes. Take what was a 2-1 deficit, turn it into a 3-2 advantage. Down the end line. Charleston wins it back. Long ball. 20 seconds left. Bounces out. Off the Cougars. Duke will have a throw. That should just about do it. Ten, nine, eight, Blue Devils dominate seven, in shots. 35-7. But need a pair three, of late goals two, from Forster Ajago. One. And they will knock off they College of Charleston tonight. 3-2. First defeat of the season for the Cougars, they dip.